Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well and you've had a great week on this wonderful Friday. We do have a few announcements to share. I'd like to first thank everyone who attended or even viewed the State of the Schools, our second annual State of the Schools. It was a phenomenal event. Our students were spotlighted throughout the program, and I, I just want to say it gave us an opportunity to share the work that we're doing, and we're doing great work here in Clayton County. So again, thank you for all that attended or viewed or that supported and planned for the event, or even just encouraged others to attend. We'd like to also thank everyone for attending and participating in the Real Talk sessions that we've done. We've done two. We've done um, two, one here at the Performing Arts Center, or one at the Performing Arts Center, and one at the International Center. I must say that our parents came in large numbers at, to the International Center, and I'm very pleased and, and honored to have been able to have that conversation with them. We want to acknowledge that uh, counselor, uh, the National School Counselor Week, February 4th through February 8th, our counselors were recognized at the board last the uh, February board meeting. We have a beautiful sign that has been developed by the counselors that is basically hanging in the central office as you walk into the HR and business uh, departments. You can see the sign. We want to thank all of our counselors here in Clayton County, our leadership of the counselors, Dr. Alicia Dunn, who does a phenomenal job, and to all of our counselors, I just appreciate who our counselors are, the work that they're doing with our students. Love, love the new the new t-shirt that the counselors uh, have landed upon. It's a beautiful message. We want to say thank you again for all that you do for our students here in Clayton County Public Schools. As you well know by now, if you don't, you should know, the Board of Education voted to basically move away from the uniform for our 9th through 12th grade students in non-magnet, non-school choice programs. And so you should know, starting in the fall of this coming year, our students, our students will, at the high school level, at the high school level, they will be allowed to meet, and they're expected to meet certain dress expectations, but we will not have the expectation that they wear a certain color for their pants or a certain color or type of shirt for their upper, for this shirt. And so, one, the exemption, again, is for school choice and magnet programs. And remember this, students in grades K through 8 will continue, will continue, will continue to adhere to uniform dress policy in 2019-2020 school year. Also, we will be adjusting our middle and high school start times. Effective August of 2019, middle school will start at 8.45 a.m. a.m. and end at 3.45 p.m. High schools will start at 8.20 a.m. and end at 3.15 p.m. We are appreciative of this change. We acknowledge that it will require all of us to adjust a little bit, but it's a change that's good for our young people. Uh, in particular, we want to ensure that our high school students are afforded the opportunity to participate in extracurricular activities, work, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so, Thank you, thank you for supporting us as we make this well-needed adjustment. You should know that in the 2019-2020 school year, right now, we're working to implement block schedule in our high schools. Effective again, the 2019-2020 school year, we're moving away from the traditional seven period schedule to a four by four block schedule. Students will take four classes per semester, eight classes per year giving them an opportunity to earn 32 Carnegie, Carnegie credits. The grad requirement of 23 units, Carnegie units, will not change. So we're not changing the grad, grad requirement of 23 units, but we will provide students more opportunities to earn more credits. The benefits include increased learning and instructional time to engage students in project-based learning and lab investigations due to fewer transitions increasing opportunities for collaborative planning, time for teachers, more time for one-on-one -on -one support and small group instruction, more time for student internships, work-based learning and possible early CTAE pathway completion. Potentially, we can and expect to decrease behavior infractions, 
And please know, please know that instruction will continue to receive the focus that it needs as we ensure that our practices are engaging, require students to think at high levels, and are consistently effective in every classroom. So again, block schedule for high schools in the year 2019-2020. Let's not forget we will observe President Day, President's Day on Monday, February 18th. All schools and offices will be closed during this holiday, Monday, February 18th, and will resume on Tuesday, February 19th. And as a reminder, our SPLA 6 vote is on March 19th. So what are we voting for? A new Morrow High School, a new elementary school in the Lovejoy area, a new college and career academy, a new early learning center in the Riverdale area. We're voting, we're voting for a new college and career academy to serve all high schools, all high schools with very innovative programs. We're voting for new buses. We're voting for the continuation of our one-to-one -one initiative, extending learning beyond the classroom where we provide a device to every third through 12th grade students. We're voting for more HVAC upgrades, more renovations, etc. We're voting. We're voting to ensure that our students have access to the very best facilities. And I should say, the Morrow High School that we build will also contain a 6,000 seat arena. So we will no longer have to rent out facilities to host our graduations. We'll be able to use our facility right here in Clayton County Public Schools. So again, March 19th, while I can't tell you how to vote, I can tell you this, that if we vote for this referendum and it passes, these things will occur. If the referendum fails, these things will not occur. The community has to decide what it wants to occur for its children here in Clayton County Public Schools. Well, that's all I have for today. Thanks again. Let's remember to keep the focus on instruction. Look at your data. Allow your data to drive your instruction. Remember our strategies, close reading, academic discussions, higher order thinking questions, engaging students to think critically. Remember, we, as the educators, we determine the culture. We create the culture that we appreciate. Let's continue to provide a very rigorous experience for all of our students. Thank you. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you as we visit schools or at one of our critical conversations in the very near future. Thank you. Take care.